Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> Fanatics turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant Invoker. Team Pick. Fanatics turn to pick. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the ESO1 Frankfurt Southeast Asia Qualifier. We have Fnatic facing up against Execration in one of our two qualifier matches for the day. Uh, on the other side, we are going to have an MVP Phoenix match, I believe, there versus uh, Signature Trust. So, two uh, pretty interesting matches today. And uh, following up, then we have the semifinals and finals. They're all going to be back to back. The. Um, Starting 11, CEST every day. Fanatics Wrap up on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. So hopefully you guys will all tune in for that. But there are our first game, Fnatic versus Execration. We already have Giraffe, and I'm going to be joined by Heen. Radiant Heen, what's up, man? Back. Casting a lot of Dota lately. Yeah, a lot of uh, European games as well. But um, it's kind of ironic. For the C games, I had to kind of wake up early because I was used to the European time zone. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 6 p.m. right now, but it really feels like morning. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on with uh, my sleep schedule. But uh, Fnatic, I think it's been a big issue mm -hmm. lately. But th these guys have been on such a crazy winning streak, but it recently got broken by Signature Trust. Uh, clean 2-0. I didn't get to watch them. Still, uh, since then, though, they've been at it again. They're like, okay, I broke our streak. Let's start again. Maybe we'll get a longer streak. Uh, so they've been basically dominating the C scene right now. And we have to see if execration. Um, turn to I think most people would definitely say Fnatic are the favorite here. And if execration managed to knock out Fnatic, that would be a huge upset. Uh, and really fun to see. Ten seconds. Especially Nine. given the way that uh, Southeast Asia, it, it seems like there has Five only really been Nine. two contenders out of the C region for these like major qual uh, like these these major LAN events um, from C, and that's Fnatic and MVP Phoenix. MVP Phoenix who usually just show up at LAN, uh, oftentimes not performing the same way that they do on online qualifiers and then Fnatic of course just being the strongest team uh, in the region kind of consistently but we are seeing some of the rise of some of these other Southeast Asian teams uh, my bet right now my uh, I've got TNC I, I feel like they're you know a really strong team and I feel like they're one of the teams that's uh, most likely to be able to upset these kind of top two um, but of course execration is um, Definitely not a team that you want to um, narc on, that's for sure. They've uh, actually been doing not too bad for themselves. Um, in this specific matchup, they may be the underdogs, but they've Ten already beat uh, a pretty good team. Um, in the past. I believe they were... Um, Five seconds remaining. They recently take on that they beat... They lost to TNC twice in a row, which Reserve was... Time. But... 
remember, I remember watching a game not so long ago where I was like, oh, execution. Oh, they beat Mineski. I think that's what it was. Like, oh, okay, stands, so stands they beat him in a best of one. Fanatics yeah. turn to pick. I mean, losing to TNC is not really something to you know, be embarrassed about. Basically, if I had to choose three teams in SEA that were tier one, including the two you mentioned, it would probably be TNC third. Uh, they're just a really fun team to watch. Radiant team pick. I mean, going back to the draft, though, I, I mean, it's kind of funny that like execration, the. I mean, they have the vengeful, but I think Fnatic were kind of expecting that to happen. Uh, they basically picked the Batrider before the vengeful, right? So they're like, oh, we don't really care too much of the vengeful, and then Fnatic get their one of their screen. signature Spectre picks. They really love Spectre, and I. Five seconds. They basically Two haven't lost dogs. in such a long time. I I rarely see them. Fanatics badly respected. Maybe that one game against MVP where they were two racks down and they managed to come back from it. Their lineup's looking pretty pick up. Like, they've got a lot of single target between the Batrider picking somebody off, the Enchantress's uh, strong amount of damage. They're also looking um, okay when it comes Five to, to laning remaining. phase. I think the all lanes with Batrider are particularly threatening. Um, I'm not sure if that's what they're actually going to do here with this Enchantress, if they're going to be running more in the offlane, or if it's going to be more protecting the Spectre um, and roaming on to the, the mid lane. But either way, the Enchantress is kind of one of those better heroes to secure your laning phase. Execration, meanwhile, they look like they're, they're a team that once they get their like basic items by 20, 25 minutes on Sven and Darkseer, and then the Invoker just has levels and a Midas, they're looking like a really good team fight squad. That is going to be able to take five man's call. Yeah. And so far, one of the things that's going well for Execration in terms of game plan is that Darkseer is going to possibly have a really fast mech timing if the Enchantress doesn't focus too much on the Spectre lane. So like Spectre, Witch Doctor shouldn't be too much of a threat mm -hmm. uh, for Darkseer to just farm Ten freely. Then we haven't seen any errors or Fnatic. And you mentioned five that 20 minute seconds, timing maybe. where Sven's going to peak. And no mech versus mech. I think Execration have a good time. chance of at least holding a dominating position in mid game. Good pick up here. What are you looking for to kind of round out this lineup? They're not going to be able to get the global strategy as the Zeus is banned away from Execration. There's not too many mids left. There's some of our more early game nuker focus like Puck and Lena. I don't think any of our more semi-carry mids are left full. Most of them end away. I think Fnatic, if they're gonna go for a mid hero, they want something that is elusive against the Sven, uh, like the Puck or the Wind Ranger. There aren't many heroes that can just straight out tank Sven's uh, burst potential, so you have to, yeah, just deflect it somehow. You um have you seen Bid One uh play Batrider at all? I, I was just curious. I don't I don't think that's what they're going for, but I was just curious if that was ever a strategy that Fnatic could employ. Um, because I I've seen many other teams they like running Batrider specifically against Invoker. Uh, it feels like one of those matchups they can. Okay. Radiant team. Pick. Yeah, as it's going to be a plug yeah. them in. Yeah, I was going to answer that. I've seen mid one play Earth Spirit, oh, which he uh -huh. publicly said was not something that he practiced. So I was like, if he can play Earth Spirit, which he wasn't comfortable on, um, he could definitely play Batrider. Mm -hmm. They're going to go for one of the more niche fanatic signature heroes here, the Pugna mid. I'm not sure how it goes against Invoker. Uh, but this team, Fnatic, they put a lot of faith into mid one as like. The laning phase is not too important. He's just a great player all around, and even if Pugna has an early game around, they're gonna come to a point where they're gonna play as a team and try to cover the Pugna. This does kind of uh, make it a bit scarier for Execration to do that five manning that we were talking about. How their their team fight should kind of be superior. I like like the bounty hunter though. I think the bounty hunter can definitely abuse the the pug a lot i feel like this is also a hero that um 
will be able to take advantage of the team fight strength of execration and kind of get that ball uh, rolling. I mean, it's going to be an Exord Invoker, so you have that global power already. So the Bounty Hunter may even be able to solo set up uh, some kills on supports thanks to the extra damage uh, from Sunstrike. I think the lanes are looking super good for Execration right now. Uh, maybe the only concern would be the bottom lane. Sven and Ventral, not, it's like one semi-range hero against a Batrider who's going to be so annoying for the Sven. And if Ohio managed to waste the mana on the Sven and Ventral, then he can pretty much have an easy as of a lane that uh, the Darkseer at top could potentially have. However, we have to, to count Invoker. Sunstrike followed by two stuns is going to make it so that there's just going to be so much more bursts than Ohio would expect from his own lane outside its sources. So what do you do as a bounty hunter in this play, right? You're, you're looking to disrupt the Enchantress as much as possible. Is your per first play to uh, block off that offlane camp to make sure that DJ doesn't get that Battle early creep? Begins. Or do you like what R is doing right now and trying to be more disruptive in the mid and top lane? Yeah, I think it looks like he wants to block this mid camp near the dire base because that's kind of like if you get a creep from there, you can either go top or um, mid, whereas the secret shop is more just specialized for going to the offlane. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh he got managed. the sentry. Yeah, but one kind of slow on the fingers there. Still, if he's going to be poke putting so much focus on the pugna, uh, this will allow DJ to be able to get that early offlane camp. But he is going to rotate back into. Uh, his own jungle trying to grab another creep. He's just going to throw that uh, Wildwing Ripper to the bottom lane to help out the bad rider. And I guess it's not necessary, right? Their, their dual lane uh, shouldn't really be strong enough to beat Ohio, given the fact that they do have such little range. You just give him one extra creep, and he's going to be he's going to be good, essentially, for the bottom lane. Yeah. I mean, just look at what happened. Oh, mid one? Oh, that is so annoying. He does have the fallback of Decrepify every single time to be able to uh, deal with Cold Snap. So that, that's actually going to help out quite a lot. Yeah, what happened in the bottom was that Ohio just, he started Ring of Protection and just tanked both the stuns from Vengeance Sven. And, I mean, Nando does have two mangoes right now, but you don't really want to use a mango unless it's going to ensure you a kill. For a top, it looks like Bounty Hunter has been spotted out. Gonna be able to get the cask on him, get some damage. Golem Shard follows up, or will be able to get out. Thanks in part to the search from the Darks here. His rotation kind of being scouted here. He doesn't have any more counter wards to uh, take those out. So kind of feels like his laning phase at, at top is kind of over. He's probably just going to have to focus on trying to shut out the mid lane. Maybe following the Enchantress around, just kind of depending on what opportunity uh, present themselves. DJ getting that Invis rune, he's kind of like uh, being a bounty hunter right now. Go for a bit, but I don't think it's going to lead too much. Just a friendly ass here. I love this timing. Oh, never mind. DJ too. He actually timed it perfectly for the golems to actually split apart as he ganked, meaning he gets not one stun, but three. And that is enough for Midwan to be able to claim that first blood against the Invoker. What an excellent gank there from DJ. Okay. Bottom, they're going to go on Ohio only if Invoker was alive. Oh, Ohio sneaking himself away. Does manage to get uh, a decent amount of healing out and will run back through Kimo to get some more damage out. They do have the Mango though from Nando. You brought that up earlier and they will have enough damage to finish him off just barely without dying. Both Nando and Kimo surviving on less than 50 HP. Yeah, but you can't feel too great about this. Just look at all these creeps that Sven has to... He basically has no regen anymore. He has like a Mango and he has the last hit under the tower against nine creeps. See if, uh, but see if you those golems it. from those golems from DJ, holy crap! Sometimes I forget just how much damage three stuns do from the golems. Yeah, that's uh, what 375 damage, right? I think it's 125 for rock. 
per rock, right? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I'm Dyer's trying to find a, a golem now to double check that, but I think it's it's a pretty high amount of damage. It, it really is. And oh. Nando will uh, be able to kill Ohio again. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Bounty Hunter actually gets scouted out there by Fnatic. They pop the dust and manage to uh, to catch him. It cost them the Dire Courier, though, so I, I kind of want to say it's worth it for Bounty Hunter to suicide on couriers. I don't know. The amount of gold that you get is... Uh, it, it feels a, like a worthy trade off in time. Yeah, I think so, too. And Nando kind of... Uh, not I mean, expecting a rotation like that, I guess, but... And it should be red, given the fact that they yeah. ganked the bounty hunter and started yeah. heading for the bottom room. Yeah, uh, there were so many clues. A bounty hunter dying there uh, in that spot, followed by, like, it was so close to the four-minute rune. And he just looks so tasty right now. So defenseless. Mid one. He's pretty far forward here. He's getting some good blasts on this tower thanks to the arcane rune. Very low cooldown, but he is going to be slowed down by the Bounty Hunter long enough for Kimo to get the stun. Follow up Nando, two-man stun there. They easily get that kill, plus the Sun Strike gets its damage onto Ohio, but looks like RR is going to die underneath the flames. Ohio is easily able to run him down. Nando as well as Kimo can't really do anything to help him. Firefly out. Yeah, he definitely was a bit far out, but he didn't expect the Bounty Hunter, uh, obviously, from the way he was playing. And... It was an unexpected rotation. There's so much damage done to safe lane already at the five minute mark. Back How's, to our uh, mid lane. Yeah. Abe is going to talk about net, but looks like there might be some action at mid. Yeah. DJ's going to come in, double centaurs, stunning him up, plus the cast. Meanwhile, Pugna draining his life away will be able to help get the kill on the invoker and uh, also pressure this tower, so Radiance getting good there, but attack. what about Ned? He's, he's uh, doing well for himself in CS, and he does have his level 6, so he can join in on the next gank that Fnatic executes. Yeah, he has so much gold saved, though. Radiance I wonder if he's not going to go for the standard build. This game, DJ and mid one. Oh, Abed, are you? Is he dead again? He might just be. He doesn't have anything to be able to get out of this situation. He just TP's in right into almost death, and there goes the Spectre Ultimate. Will be able to help get that kill, and uh, Bat Rider does get the Ventral Spirit at bottom lane at the exact same time, so net. Not sure. It didn't look like he was able to be a part of the mid kill, but I think he was able to jump to bottom to be a part of that and jump back. RR is barely. No, he's not going to make it out. Couldn't get through the trees. Block the vision of DJ. Able to get another good snipe out there with the dust. Three to ten. Execration just falling apart now as Fnatic really pushing up the tempo of this game. Just way too rough right now. I feel they had good lane, but the rotations from Fnatic were more spot on. Rather, like, I don't see too much rotations from Execration so far other than the Bounty Hunter. Uh, but that's, you can't really call it rotation. That's just the nature of a hero. And at this point, I'm afraid to say this, like, well, what's Execration? How are they going to make a comeback into the game right now? Because this Sven is not having a clean game. You ideally don't want any deaths until the, like, the 15 minute mark. You just want to get your Helm of Dom, um, get that early farm potential roaming uh, starting. And Abed, oh man, we, we haven't really, we, we saw him die, but he has a glove of face and he's so far away from the Midas. And his tower's been taken as well, which means like mid one, he can just ro start rotating to other towers and Invoker doesn't feel too comfortable fighting it. He's only level six. He shouldn't feel too comfortable fighting. Uh, and like all the all these heroes on Execration, Dark Siri, he doesn't have anything. Neither does a Sven, so basically everyone is not ready to fight on Execration, but Fnatic are going to press, press the issue, and someone has to the sacrifice in terms of like uh, the time. Fnatic keep on going, knowing that as you said, Execration really don't have the heroes to stop these kind of pushes. Feels like um, Bounty Hunter is definitely going to um, 
So the, the, I don't think this was the, the last pick. You know, at first I was like, okay, you can, you know, harass the lanes. You're talking about building up that banning gold, but seeing this push strat from Fnatic, uh, you're really seeing them just abuse this bounty hunter pick so heavily. While they do trade towers, it's still a tier two for a tier one, and Fnatic are going to keep on going, forcing somebody, or more like a majority, of Execration to come back to their base and defend, opening the map even for Fnatic. Yeah, it's something you definitely don't expect or uh, expect against a Spectre lineup to get high grounded at nine minutes. Immo almost gonna die here just purely from two impeta shots and a flame break. They're gonna run down pins instead. They will be able to get that kill. Spectre ultimate bouncing around a little bit. Will be able to bring this tower. It's already down below half HP. Midwan is actually running out of mana soon. So Fnatic, not because Execration have pushed them away, but solely because they're running out of mana, they're probably gonna have to back out now. Should, but there they go. I mean, like, come on, guys. They, you guys got a tier three at nine minutes. It's good <laughs> yeah, there's no need to get too uh, greedy. I mean, they're like. They're like overachievers, right? They're like need racks uh, uh, pre 10 minutes. Uh, but they have so many items coming in, too. They've got uh, the mech now completed from mid one. Blink Dagger is going to be up rather I shortly here. Um, Spectre probably just completing drums next. I felt like there was so much action that I was going to say Batrider's blink timing is like standard, but it's actually only 10 minutes in. I mean, execration. I think this is an extension of problem that I pointed out earlier. Is that basically they don't want to do anything right now. Um, they're just focused on being stronger individually, so that they could possibly make some kind of glorious team fight happen later. Uh, but the problem is, Fnatic are is they're the ones in position to decide whether um, they execration are allowed to do that and. I definitely don't think Fnatic are going to be so generous as to give them time that they want. Fnatic, three man smoke up, going to run their way behind the tier one tower while mid one pushes out the lane. Because he's got the mech, they feel pretty free to just let him solo push. The smoke is going to pop, they pop the dust, and they are going to reveal RR. Thanks to help to the Spectre ultimate, they're going to be able to see that kill, plus grab Tim's from Ohio. He's going to try and go for a vacuum surge play out, but he doesn't have the time. Fnatic executing the gank perfectly, get an extra kill, and will now be able to take tier 1 and probably tier 2. Execration not going to be ready to fight yet, but will lose all of their outer towers soon. The... Unfortunately, Sven is not in a position to be doing something deficient right now. I mean, one thing we have to about is this Pugna's pushing speed. Uh, one of the reasons that Pugna is not so popular is like you, you see a Pugna trying to push down your towers and earlier we saw the bounty on her uh, hit Pugna at the tier 1 and get, punish the Pugna for it with a cement uh, vengeful but at this point where he's being escorted by his team. Oh wow, that nice kill. Finally, that patient needed him. They're, they're going to need a lot more pickoffs, just like that, actually. They haven't made too much use of the Sunstrike either in this game, which yeah. is unfortunate. I mean, it's really... the, yeah, the, the game Abed had, though. Only thing he can do. And, uh, when he's so underleveled, that's kind of what it, it, the Exord Invoker is. Oh, so then goes down to the top lane. Exord Invoker is like very laning phase focused and farm heavy, and the only global power he usually brings to any of some of these early pushes is going to be that Sun Strike. It's not until you get those later levels, 14, 15, 16, um, and you start looking towards that Ags, then Invoker becomes more of a viable full team fight force uh, other than just. Yeah. I mean, Invoker, he had a 0 and 3 start. He died. A lot of times in the really early game, but he's gonna s slowly come back from this. Like, if this game were to go on for another 20 minutes, he's gonna have like his agonims, uh, possibly drums and all, all that jazz. But for the Svendo, I 
not sure if Sven is going to be able to use this like uh, ancient side of his map, the ancient area and secret shop neutral camp. This is such an easy area for a bat rider to control that I fear that the Sven is not going to be able to scale as well as the uh, Spectre, which I mean that's part like how you win the game for Execration at the beginning, they must have been thinking that our Sven has to have like 0.5 times the net worth of the Spectre uh, for this game to be relatively easy. Even, even. Pick off on Abed, tries to go for the TB out, but not even worth the gold. Attempt, it's just too easy for Fnatic to get that kill. Meanwhile, they're also doing Roshan. Yes, they're giving up the tier one tower at top lane. That's fine. It's a safe lane tower. You don't really care too much about it if you're a uh, dire side fanatic at this point. You don't really need to control your jungle because you're uh, most of the time going to be pushing aggressively and taking the Radiant side jungle away and uh, also trying to get back to back Roshans. If the game even goes that long because fanatic may just be able to end this game with this round of Aegis. Yo, why I don't think uh, Vengeful is like the end-all counter to Batrider as uh, Fnatic are kind of showcasing. What the? It's like when the game goes sour, Vengeful can't be at multiple places at once. And generally, uh, one of the ways you want to come back is to farm up um, or then you have to fight into a Batrider. But that means you have to run around the map not knowing when you're going to get lassoed and uh, Spectre Haunted. I think Spectre Haunt is so good um, Batrider in, in terms of like giving Batrider info, uh, intel on the eventual. Bouncing around Execration, trying to go for the Pugna Ward. Kimmo's going to be pulled back in. They have the Storm Bolt that goes out. Kimmo's still going to be dying here. A little bit more damage to the Enchantress will seal the deal. Now the Cat bouncing around, controlling Nando underneath that Death Ward. He's got a lot of armor, but it just doesn't make a damn difference. When all of Fnatic start beating on him towards the end there, they will be able to take this lane of Rax, and they'll probably, given the amount of sustain that they have, not really worry too much. Oh my Jesus. god. He just two shot the Bounty Hunter. All right. Well, Fnatic, again, the sustain that they have lets them just go straight to mid. They, they'll they take this tier two tower next. Sometimes DJ makes plays where I'm not sure, like, if he's reaching for it, but I like DJ standards, it's like uh, he expected to, expected it to work like that earlier. Gank onto the invoker with his uh, lone golem, but golem that split into two and just did so much damage. I, I like how also Net didn't even bother haunting him. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> I was looking at that, I was like, one, two, three, four. There's four members of Fnatic. Wait a minute, where's Net? Oh, he's still at top lane. He didn't even pop the ultimate during that fight because he knew it wasn't necessary. He's just keeping in the, the top lane push. That way they can take that tier two after they take the tier two at mid. Four staff uh, for Ohio. They've got uh, another 2,500 gold on mid one. That almost has his Manta. And uh, we're going to have an Axe in not too long for DJ. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a scenario where Execution can at least make a somewhat of a comeback and be viable to it. Like, it's actually viable for Execution to win this game. They have track, which is a good start, right? They have track, so some crazy dives from Fnatic result in massive gold swings. However, their heroes are not the best at uh, doing non-committal damage. Like, the Sven doesn't want to be here defending. Uh, there is potential to... I mean, the eventual is going to be here, but... He's not going to feel too comfortable yet without the BKB. Net still pushing out the uh, whatever lane the rest of his team is in. He's always in a different lane. This time he's going to pop that ultimate as they start going in with the Mad Rider. Kimo is going to be the first one down already. 
Always making sure to take away that slot. The vacuum defends Nando a little bit. He goes back in for the fight, but just gets blown up immediately. The double damage on the Spectre proves to be too much. RR can't even make it out because, again, Jake gets them with that dust. They'll take the uh, second lane of Rax and force Execration to call an 18 and a half minute GG. Yeah, just a clean game from Fnatic. You know, well, the last time we talked about Fnatic, uh, when they just got back from the majors, um, you and I both agreed that it, yeah, Fnatic were good, but mm -hmm. not sure. No, we weren't quite convinced, but ever since they got back from majors and the dominating the SAA region, these guys are legit. Like uh, the game, their games on C region um, are. Of course, their opponents are a bit less experienced than what they would 